Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about another discovery of very interesting exoplanets very close to us. We'll talk about one of these planets that might even resemble planet Earth and two other neighbors that are a little bit different. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. A few years ago, these scientists were super excited when they discovered the planet that you see right here, Proxima b. This is the closest exoplanet to us, and it just so happens that it also orbits in what's known as the habitable zone, where you could technically have liquid water. Basically, it's at a distance from its star, where you can potentially have water and possibly even other similar conditions to Earth. Then we discovered another system that was even more exciting because it contained seven Earth-like planets with several of them in the habitable zone. The system known as TRAPPIST-1 was a little bit farther away, as a matter of fact it was close to about 40 light years away from us, but it was very exciting nevertheless. And for the past few years this project right here, known as Red Dot, has been really active at trying to discover more similar Earth-like planets or just any planets around these so-called red dwarfs out there in space. Mostly because today we know that the red dwarfs, specifically like this one right here, this is the closest one to us, known as Proxima Centauri, have a very high chance of having um, Earth-like planets, but also because uh, we've already discovered so many and it seems like many of these objects do possess similar more planets. So this project has been going on uh, and quite actively discovering a lot of different planets. And just recently we discovered another not so far away from us. As a matter of fact, the 20th closest star to us, known as Gliese 1061, also known as GJ 1061 that you see right here, just a typical red dwarf, but at a distance of only about 12 light years away from us, has three really interesting planets. And we've just discovered and confirmed them with one planet, fourth planet, might still be hiding somewhere out there because there are some indications that it might also be there as well. So what do we know about this particular star? Well, we know that unlike other red dwarfs we've seen, it's not as active, which is actually really, really good news. It means that it's not producing enough flares and because of that might give the chance for these exoplanets that you see orbiting right there to actually have some sort of an atmosphere and possibly even liquid water. Because unfortunately the biggest problem with planets like Proxima b and possibly even planets in the TRAPPIST-1 system is that because their parent stars are really active, they might not actually um, give a chance to these planets to form a permanent atmosphere. So a lot of these planets might be barren just like the one I just mentioned in one of the previous videos. We actually believe many of these planets might not have any atmosphere unless their star is more or less mellow. Now unfortunately this planet that you see right here is procedurally generated so it's not really what one of the planets might look like, but we're going to try to recreate them using Universe Sandbox just so you can actually see why they're kind of exciting. And if you like reading and you like science, you can also read the article that you see on the screen in the description below. So. Let's investigate the star first, and this is what the star might look like. And in comparison to our own sun, it is actually really, really small. It is closer in size to planets like Jupiter, um, just a little bit bigger in size than Jupiter, uh, than it is to an actual typical G-type star. Now this is what a typical red dwarf might look like, but this one is also very, very tiny even compared to other red dwarfs. Like for example, the nearby Proxima Centauri, as you can see, is also just a little bit larger. So this here is about 11% the mass of our sun. It's also extremely dim. It's only about 0.1% of brightness of our own sun, at least in visible light. So technically this is actually a little bit too bright. Uh, and at the same time, it does produce a lot of ultraviolet radiation, it produces a lot of infrared radiation, which provides heat. But it's just not very good at producing visible light, so it's very difficult to see the star. And um, what's really interesting is that, like I said, it's not very active, it doesn't really produce that many flares. Then we have three planets. The closest one, known as GJ1061b, is roughly around, roughly around 1.4 masses of Earth, and in terms of the size here, 
it might be a little bit better. We don't actually know what the size is yet uh, because we haven't seen the actual planet um, passing in front of the star. Which is actually a good time for me to explain how we've discovered these planets. We did not discover these planets by the usual method where we see the planet pass in front of a star and block a little bit of the light and then move away so we can see that something happened. Instead, what the scientists behind this paper did was to investigate the actual pull that these planets cause on the star itself as it slowly moves around uh, basically empty space. I think if we look at this graph here, we can kind of sort of imagine seeing this. This is the motion or the speed of the star. And you'll notice that as it's being pulled by three of the planets, it's going to start forming this very predictable pattern. And by using this pattern, they were able to estimate not only the mass of each of the planets, but also um, how they were interacting with one another and possibly even seeing some of their eccentricities. Now, what's interesting here is that if you look at the paper itself, you'll even see these patterns that I just described to you and you can then compare them to what you get in the Universe Sandbox just to see if the authors are even correct, although I'm pretty sure they are. But anyway, so that's kind of how they discovered these planets, but um, what we know about them is really just the mass. We don't know their actual size and because of that we can't really um, identify their density, so we don't know what's inside of them. But this one here is about 1.4 masses of Earth, so it's a little bit more massive. And it's also a little bit closer to the star than the other two planets. So here the temperatures are probably pretty high. And the other two planets are in the habitable zone. This one is a little bit closer. Uh, so this is kind of where Venus is located in our own solar system. And its mass is about 1.7 masses of Earth, um, a little bit higher than that. So this is the most massive of three planets. And lastly, we have the third and the most exciting planet, which is basically just known as Planet D for now, that receives just as much radiation from the star as our planet Earth. In other words, it's in practically almost exactly the same location in the star system where it gets just as much radiation. So here, if there is any atmosphere or if there is any um, water present on the surface, it should technically have some sort of a liquid ocean or body of water that might be able to support life. So this planet is very exciting and it's relatively close to us. So compared to other planets, this is about three times as far away as Proxima b at 12 light years away from us, but also about three times closer than the TRAPPIST-1 system. So this is sort of in the middle and is definitely one of the more exciting um, red dwarf planets we've discovered so far because the star itself is not very active but also because the planet is in a very comfortable position in the habitable zone. And the last discovery coming from this particular study is in regards to the stability of these planets. All three planets have what's known as resonance. Basically, if, you, if I were to accelerate time here, if we were to look at the orbits, for every um, four orbits of the central planet, you get about two orbits of the second planet, so this one will orbit twice, and then you get only one orbit of the um, third planet. This is very similar to what Jupiter has with its moons um, very close to it. Specifically, Io, um, Europa, and Callisto form a very, very similar um, resonance of one, two, four. And this implies that this system has been stable like this for possibly billions of years and will remain very, very stable for a very long time. So it's very likely that this planet right here will be a very important uh, part of future investigations when we're trying to discover other potential signs of life or water or atmosphere around these planets, but also might become a very interesting planet to explore once we're able to go to other star systems. Until then though, that's all I wanted to mention in the video. Check out the paper in the description below, share this with someone who loves learning about sciences and space, and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, maybe consider supporting the channel Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.